Welcome to Star Citizen, the Alpha 3.12 and a guide if it doesn't run as it should. Because today we deal with how we can optimize a few more frames per second, so FPS, a better performance or the game in general something graphically. And here we look at 25 small or even bigger tips which can influence the game performance. Since every system is different, let's take a quick look at my used setup with which hardware components I'm currently playing with, so you can also classify how the FPAs numbers come about, which we might see later in the game, and how you can compare them with your system. I'm playing on a Ryzen 9 5900X and a RDX 3090 and with 64GB of DDR4M. The current system is not a low budget system, but rather the high category. However, until recent, I had an older i5 Intel processor and an Nvidia GeForce 1070 on 32GB RAM. From there, I can determine some parallels or differences that also affect the performance and no, here not only strong hardware. And the note some menus are displayed in German, but of course, I have translated all the steps accordingly for you, and they are all self explanatory. So we start directly with 25 tips that can affect your performance or your comfort. Tip number one is the telemetry that Star Citizen, that is via the website, when you are logged in, is directly visible to you. Here we have the possibility to take a look at the different systems that are currently used and with which FPS numbers they are also available in the game. So you can use the telemetry data, if you configure it to your resolution and your system, to see if your FPS in the game is too low or adequate to the given numbers of the other players. Because one thing should be clear to you in any case, that Star Citizen as an alpha is still far from being optimized, which means accordingly not to offer the FPS and performance values to other AAA titles. Even with extremely strong hardware like the current RTX 3090 as the strongest graphics card on the market or a Ryzen 9 5900X, we don't always have good playable frames in big cities or urban centers. Here we often only get about 30 frames for a short time and that is not due to the hardware or a misconfiguration on your part, but simply the unoptimized game state. And also concerning the telemetry data, these are partly to be enjoyed with caution. We for example see ourselves here with the point marked. For our system however, if we go on it, other hardware information is partly indicated to us than we use. Here an Intel 9900K is indicated to us, the graphics card fits and the average frames is also correct, however just not what we have installed. As a rough estimate or comparison the data is useful however. Tip 2 use in any case, if it's possible, a SSD hard disk. Because no other of the following tips will bring you more performance and power like a SSD hard drive. Should you not run Star Citizen with an SSD, you will regularly have loading errors, so missing elements in the game and other effects, because here a streaming technology is used, where a fast hard drive is actually mandatory. And here is a small example, if you are using 16GB of RAM and thinking about upgrading the memory, I would strongly recommend upgrading from an HDD to an SSD first. Here you get more performance than for example with a double amount of RAM. Here SSD hard disks with a high speed are also advantages. For example we use a fast M2 hard disk, which has a fast connection and we can see in the right corner under the loading times that they are well below average. And to narrow down the clarify the issue of general performance for Star Citizen, you can see in the upper area a percentage display that shows you globally what all players have in common for average frames. And here we have about 25% of all players playing above 40 FPS. And that is mostly due to the lack of optimization. The next tip we don't count as a whole tip, but it's a general collection direct from CIG what you can do in case of performance problems or general game problems. This guide is updated regularly and actually offers a lot of what we'll see in this guide today. This serves as a basis for most of the fixes of bugs, or display drivers or other problems then can be traced back to for example graphic card or your hardware. But of course the information is rather general and contains many standards and phrases which should be old hat for every PC gamer. 
That's why we picked out the points and of course added some other points to keep the whole thing as compact as possible for you. And via the timestamps in the video you can of course always jump to the corresponding place which is of interest for you. What is still missing here is that overclocking the processor or graphics card can have a strong negative effect in the game, in the current degree of optimization of the alpha version. The third tip, the Windows Xbox Game Bar, is something that can directly affect your system. However, once again in advance, check the Windows update regularly. You should always be up to date here, just like your graphic card drivers, motherboard drivers and everything that affects your system components. If you click here in the system settings on the Xbox logo, you come to the Xbox Game Bar. Make sure that this is deactivated and also the recording is not active. And already here we have saved the one or other frame per second. We come to tip number 4, which can also have a big impact of your performance. In the settings, look under energy and for the settings for main operation and energy saving, and under the additional settings, select the high performance mode for Ryzen processors or the maximum performance. This way you will have full processor performance in any case. Our tip number 5 doesn't have any great effect on the performance, but it is a pleasant feature and that is to deactivate the automatic notification assistant. You can either deactivate it completely or only activate alarms that is, display really important system messages. Because every alarm that is displayed to you in the game not only disturbs the immersion, but of course also costs some performance. With tip number 6 we go under the graphics settings. Via the search you come to this window, where you can activate the hardware acceleration. This refers to the fact that the main processor is supported by the hardware of the PC. The goal here is to execute tasks and functions more efficiently. With tip number 7 we go into the advanced system settings. Here we have two changes at once and under the advanced tab and here under performance we have settings. One click later you come to this window. In the new window we go again to advanced and should there not be processor performance scheduling on programs we change that accordingly. Further down we find the virtual memory. On the change, you come into this menu and should you have more than 60GB of memory, you can disable the page file completely or as you reply, no page file. However, should you have 60GB or less, I would leave the settings as default. Tip number 8 is a little bit unusual, but for Star Citizen, a performance bringer. Under your installation directory, so under Robot Space Industries and Star Citizen, you come here in this menu. On the live we find the current game version, that is the live game version you use. There is the folder bin64 and there we have the Star Citizen X. And right click on it and you can select under properties the next menu window. We deactivate in this step the full screen optimization for Star Citizen, which can bring some percentage points of performance. Because under the properties and in the next tab on compatibility, we find the menu item where we can disable the full screen compatibility. That is an optimization for the full screen application. We activate this and with a click on OK or Apply, the settings are then saved and we will gain with another tab, thereby even more performance. This follows shortly. But before that, however, we tip number 9, a small comfort setting. Under the mouse settings, we deactivate the default pointer acceleration. This has a direct effect on your mouse and especially players with the mouse or in shooter mode will notice a big difference. But now let's go directly to your graphics card settings. Right click on the Nvidia control panel or its AMD counterpart to get to the graphics menu. And since most of the settings require a lot of knowledge, we'll take the easiest solution first here, which is to set the slider completely to performance. This won't make the game more beautiful, but it will increase the FPS. However, I only use this if you have a weak system or significant FPS problems. For the next tip, we'll look at the G-Sync and FreeSync issues. This is basically an interesting and good feature when the monitor is playing along. But with Star Citizen, it can also cause problems. He will disable it if you have problems in the game. For the next tip, let's take another look at the 3D settings and we'll explicitly pick out two points here. One of the CUDA GPUs or GPUs in general. Here we select our powerful graphic card. 
Depending on the hardware, several graphics cards can be displayed here, so we simply select the strongest one. And under the energy mode, we also take the maximum performance. Often a special energy mode is set here, so we prefer the maximum performance, which also brings us the best performance in all. But attention with laptops here, of course, the power consumption increases significantly. Tip number 13. If you want to play in general with the graphics settings and the driver setups for Star Citizen in particular, then simply create a squad in 42 that is a Star Citizen profile. We can select this over among other things over the recently used programs and we here especially only for Star Citizen appropriate graphics settings. The advantage here is that we only change the settings for Star Citizen, so not for your system or other game influence. And if you have performance reserves, a small tip is to turn up the anisotropic filtering one level at a time and you will have an optical gain. For tip number 14, we must already be in the game. With Ctrl, Alt and Delete, we get into the task manager and select Star Citizen on the processes. We switch to the details and change the process priority to the Star Citizen X to high, we have fewer clan side crashes and a generally better performance. And directly here, the next tip 15. In addition, we can distribute our process cores. Be sure to leave one or two cores for remaining programs on weaker systems. And with the tip 6222, we go into the game menu, namely under the graphics settings. Here we have to adjust some things. The first point is select the native screen resolution of our monitor because even downsampling to a lower resolution doesn't automatically bring in a higher performance. We change the window mode to borderless, which in connection with tip number 8 gives us a good plus in performance. In addition, you can also tap out of the game for a short time without errors. The options VSync, Motion Blur and Sharpening are disabled, as is Chromatic Aberration. We also disable the Film Grain option. Thus, we have the optimal settings for high FPS values. By the way, the quality settings is only associated with very few FPS and we do not notice a clear optical difference. For the last bit of frames, you can of course use this option too. Tip 23 is our free user config, which you can download directly from our Discord server. You can copy this pre-configured file directly into your Star Citizen and here you can change some settings. The basic settings are a good mix for performance with a few optical losses. In the lower area you have the possibility to adjust the shader settings again, but this is at your own risk because the game then sometimes really does not look good anymore. So I would recommend you before you change these settings to be clear about it before and maybe read up on what the settings finally do. Otherwise you can simply copy the file into your Star Citizen directory and these changes will be automatically applied at the next game start. And by the way, you can edit the whole thing with the editor which you can find on every Windows version. The next tip is automatically activated in our user config. With the key next to the one, that means the small arrow up key we get into the console. If we press the key R and the tab key and choose a number between 0 and 4, we get different values displayed on the top right. On the top are the FPS values as well as all other data we have here about the server and the general game performance. And to deactivate this menu, open the console again, then the key R and tap and select 0. With a press on enter, the menu is then also disappeared and we have a clear view again. And for the general graphics optimizations to see in FPS effects are noticeable, I recommend one of the capitals. Here a quick tour with the various settings and the performance console enabled and you'll quickly see how the FPS is noticeable. Due to the moderate performance optimization of Star Citizen and the alpha phase, it is of course difficult to connect individual graphics points with the corresponding performance values. The effects on your frames per second are therefore very much depend on your used hardware and also the game version. And of course, a large part is also conditional on whether there is a high load on the server. If we have a server where we are alone or only with a few gamers, we have significantly higher FPS values. And this has already been explained by CIG several times how this is related to the performance values and the server load. A short summary on the topic you can get here. This is already from 2070 but still up to date and for those interested I recommend you to read the link. This can be found as always in the video description.
By the way, in our test course we got about 45 to 50 FPS in Laurel on Hurston with the maximum possible performance settings. Which means we have a quite performance hardware and still we don't reach the 60 FPS mark. In large areas that means where a lot of graphics calculation is necessary, these FPS values drop to as low as 40 FPS even with an RTX 3090 and a modern processor, as well as strong RAM. So you shouldn't be surprised if you only reach 20 or 25 FPS here with weaker hardware. However, as soon as we leave the urban areas we have significantly better FPS values and especially in space combat. These are then at most identical to other games. And in the last tip, we take a look at which graphics settings I would recommend, whereby we don't have a big impact on the performance, that is, the game only looks a bit different and here we only screw a bit on the gamma brightness and contrast values. Besides, I'm a fan of sharpening, so we have a sharper image impression and the whole thing just looks a tad better. And the graphical differences we take a look at right away. Especially the settings of the contrast have a clear effect on the colors and on the environment. Black is suddenly black and especially in Space Comet the whole thing looks very good. Not comic-like, but more like you would actually want the image. However, this is of course a personal taste and it remains open to everyone to adjust the image as it suits him best. If you have more tips or hints on how we can make Star Citizen more beautiful or save FPS, then let me know. The whole thing will then come as an update summarized again in a video. And finally a word on the PTU servers, especially with the test servers, it is often so that additional monitoring tools run on the part of the server or about the client. Here of course more data is needed to be able to measure the performance, therefore the performance on the test servers is usually worse than later with a release on the live service. And if you should think about a hardware update, first a fast SSD, at least 32GB of RAM a new processor and only then a fast graphic card. In this order you currently have the most gaming fun and also the best performance values. And exclusively for you, my ultimate secret tip. No, of course, LED lightning doesn't bring you any performance, but a real bonus tip, check out Chigam, the charity gamer. This one has made a good FPS guide before and I would definitely like to refer to it. Very well done, be lingual, please keep it up and thanks a lot. I hope you liked the video and leave me a like and a subscribe. The performance of Star Citizen has changed a lot in the past almost 10 years, but the requirements have always been high and still are. Even with absolute high-end performance hardware, we don't get into areas where we can talk about 100 FPS. Only in very rare exceptions we have really high FPS values and especially in big urban centers they fall below 60 even with extreme hardware. However, in Star Citizen we spend a lot of time in space, and especially in space combat, and even with 20 plays against the Nidris. With a mass of torpedoes, energy weapons and really awesome effects, we've always had over 60 up to 80 FPS with good hardware. That's definitely playable and fun. And honestly, even on lowest settings Star Citizen looks awesome. And again, at this point, a thank you to Chigam, the charity gamer. Thank you for your guide, I'm curious what's still to come. And of course there will be another Patreon giveaway in January, this time a Titan Avenger. And if you are looking for an active and friendly community for Star Citizen, check out the Royal Retirement Launch in our Discord. We are looking forward to your visit. And the most important at the end, thanks to all Patreons and channel members. Without you the whole thing wouldn't be possible. Thanks for your support, you guys rock! I say goodbye until next time. And as always, see you in the verse.